Comedy MS has always been a guide and mentor for the Communist Party and movement and for the left and democratic forces in our country and in particular in Kerala. The 18th Lok Sabha elections have resulted in a setback for the Bharatiya Janata Party and Narendra Modi in particular. This is because the BJP has failed to get a majority in the Lok Sabha. They have got 240 seats, which is 32 less than the majority mark in the lower house. And the BJP and Narendra Modi, which had said that they would get 400 plus seats in this election, are now compelled to have the coalition government with their NDA partners. This is a significant burden given by the people of India. The people of India have shown that they value democracy and the constitution. And therefore, they have put a check on the authoritarian tendencies of the Narendra Modi government which has been ruling this country for the past 10 years. And the verdict is also will act as a restraint on the BJP and Narendra Modi because they will have to accommodate to the interests of keeping a coalition government together. This would mean also that what the BJP and the RSS had dreamt about, aimed for, that is a third term for Narendra Modi with a massive majority which would enable them to amend or change the constitution and further consolidate and strengthen an authoritarian regime which would possibly be a one person, one party dictatorship. That desire and dream has been shattered. For instance, Amit Shah during the election campaign had declared that the moment the third term of the Modi government begins, they would go for implementing the one nation, one election scheme, which is that from the Parliament Lok Sabha to the Assembly to the Panchayat, local body, all elections will be held simultaneously so that they can project one leader in the election, whether it is for the Assembly, whether it is for the Panchayat, whether it is for the Lok Sabha. For that, they had already planned, the report had been prepared by the former President Kovin to bring in a series of constitutional amendments whereby all elections would be held at a single time. Now that is not possible because not only does the BJP not have a majority in the Lok Sabha, the NDA itself is far from having a two-thirds majority which is required for amending the constitution. So all the plan to restrict democratic rights of citizens, the secular basis of the constitution, there was even a demand from the BJP that we should remove the word secularism for the constitution because it was brought during the emergency by Indira Gandhi and the attack on state rights, centralization, denying states of their new rights, all this through 
constitutional changes, that road has been or that path has been barred after this verdict. So there is a great sense of relief and happiness in the country that this verdict of the people has been a blow against the Hindutva authoritarian forces in the country. So while we express our happiness or satisfaction at this verdict, we should not at the same time overlook the continuing danger of the RS, BJP and the RSS pursuing with their Hindutva communal agenda and pursuing their attempts to consolidate one party centralized authoritarian rule. The, given the nature of the RSS and the BJP, they will be looking for opportunities to regain lost ground, to consolidate their position politically, both inside parliament in terms of the majority, but also outside. They will try to create situations where they can further rally the people and forces who can help them to pursue with their communal and authoritarian agenda. There are lessons to be drawn for the secular and democratic opposition in the country. In this election campaign, the opposition platform, the main opposition platform which was the India bloc of parties, they were able to keep the focus of the campaign on issues which are of direct relevance and concern to the people like unemployment, like price rise and inflation, agrarian crisis and the threats to democracy and the constitution which will affect the lives of the people, their civil liberties, the democratic rights, their right to reservation under the constitution, etc. It is this campaign and narrative of the opposition which evoked a response to the people and which overcame the rapid communal campaign of Narendra Modi and the BJP leaders who sought once again to create communal polarization by targeting the minorities and literally indulging in hate speech during the campaign. But the fact that in a state like Uttar Pradesh, which is the heartland of Hindutva politics, of communal politics, the BJP has suffered a severe setback, having lost from having 62 seats plus two seats of the allies, 64 seats, they have come down to 35 seats. This is a big positive result that the people in Uttar Pradesh who have by and large in a considerable way supported the Hindutva communal agenda of the BJP have now in considerable numbers turned against the Hindutva platform. We must also note that this verdict in which the BJP has suffered losses is also due to the big struggles which have taken place in the past few years against the impact of the neoliberal policies. The big Kisan struggle, the historic Kisan struggle for a year, the various struggles of the working class against privatization and the struggles of different sections of the people, women, youth, students, etc., have all contributed to turning the people against the BJP. This is to be particularly emphasized because 
the post election situation with the formation of the NDA coalition government, we do not expect to see any relaxation in the pursuit of the neoliberal policies. Because the parties which are part of the coalition, apart from the BJP, like the Telugu Desam Party, all of them are full supporters of the neoliberal policies. So, we can expect that the Modi government, the third Modi government, the NDA government, will continue to pursue aggressively neoliberal policies. Because in class terms, we have seen that the BJP continues to get the support of the big bourgeoisie and the big operates of our country. You have seen how the markets have reacted. When the results came, the markets fell when they saw that the BJP has not got a majority. But the moment they formed the government, the swearing in has taken place, the stock market has again shot up because they are now confident that there will be a BJP led government, a Modi led government in the country. So, the Hindutva corporate nexus, which is the bedrock of this government and the previous governments, that remains, that combination of Hindutva, the RSS is Hindutva, and the corporate neoliberal policies. This alliance continues, and therefore, in the coming days, we have to be prepared to intensify our struggles against the impact of the neoliberal policies, which will involve the working class, the peasantry, the agricultural workers, the most oppressed social sections, the Adivasis, Dalits, women, etc. Here comes the importance of the role of the left. Because in the coming days, the attacks on the livelihood of the people, the attacks on the rights of, say, the tribal people, Adivasis, in the states where mining takes place on a big scale, in Chhattisgarh, in Jharkhand, Odisha, etc., all sections of the people who will suffer from neoliberal policies. It will be the left which will be the most consistent fighters for their cause, for their rights, to fight against these neoliberal policies. But at the same time, we have to recognize that the left has not been strengthened substantially or significantly by this election result. We have not been able to substantially increase the strength of the left in the Lok Sabha in this election. The main reason for this lack of success in increasing the strength of the left in this parliament is because of the disappointing result of the Kerala election. That is the failure of the LDF in Kerala to win a substantial number of seats. So we have to examine this self-critical. We have to conduct a self-critical assessment of why this has happened. Here, one thing has to be clear. In terms of the overall political situation in the country, we know that in Kerala, the people, by and large, like in the last Lok Sabha election, have seen the Congress and the UDF as better for playing a role at the national level in the fight against the BJP than the left or the NDF here. Because always we have seen that in terms of the national level politics, uh, the Congress is seen as a better option or better force 
to fight against the BJP. The left is not seen as having the necessary strength or resources at the national level to do so. There are of course other reasons also. So we have to see what are the shortcomings and weaknesses or defects that are there which should be set right so that we can go towards strengthening the left and the democratic forces in Kerala. Having said that, we should also look at another aspect of this Lok Sabha verdict. While the overall result is a setback for the BJP and the failure to get a majority opens up the space for our advancing the struggle in defense of democracy and federalism. We have to also look at some of the adverse aspects of the burden. Here, if you look at the Lok Sabha verdict overall, you find that the BJP has made gains or advances in the southern states, in the south, southern part of India, where it was felt that the BJP would not be able to make much headway. If you take the five southern states, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. If you study in detail the state-wise results, you will see that the BJP has made some gains, not very big spectacular gains, but in terms of the vote share, the voting percentage, in terms of the number of seats in some states, they have definitely made advances. Telangana is one state among the southern states where the BJP has shown the greatest advance. Here, the BJP which had four seats in the last election has doubled its strength, meaning eight. The total strength in Telangana is 17 seats, but the BJP has got eight seats just like the ruling Congress party there who runs the government have also got eight seats. Not only that, in Telangana, the BJP has got more than 35% of the vote, while in the previous election they had only 19%. This shows that they have emerged as the alternative party or the second party in Telangana. In Karnataka, the state where the BJP had established a strong base more than two decades ago, it appears that they have lost some ground, where they could win only 17 seats compared to the 25 seats in the previous election. But here again, if you see their vote share, and if you include their ally, which is the Janta Dal Secular, we joined them this time, they have crossed 50% vote in Karnataka again. In Kerala, of course, all of you know that the BJP has been able to win the Trishur Lok Sabha seat, the first time they won a seat in parliament. Not only that, the NDA's vote share has gone up to 19.2%, which is the highest ever they have had in Kerala. This shows Again, the pattern is common in most of the South Indian states that the BJP has been able to make electoral gains in this election. Even in a state like Tamil Nadu, they have increased their vote share from 3.6% to over 11%, so they didn't win any seat. So what this shows is that while the overall verdict of the Lok Sabha constitutes a setback to the BJP, we should not overlook the fact that they have made some advances 
in new areas and consolidated that position in some old areas. One of the new areas, of course, where they have made a big advances in Odisha, where they have been able to win the assembly election also and form the government and also win 20 out of the 21 Lok Sabha seats. So, when we talk about the post-election situation, when we talk about the formation of the third Modi government, the coalition government of the NDA, we should not underestimate the capacity of the BJP to try to regroup and advance in new areas and consolidate what they have in the traditional basis. This calls for a renewed and more vigorous struggle against the Hindutva ideology because we must never forget that the BJP is run and controlled by the RSS which has a semi-fascist ideology which they call Hindutva. So the struggle against the Hindutva ideology, the struggle in defense of democracy, secularism and federalism and as far as we communists are concerned, the struggle, the class struggle against the Hindutva corporate nexus because we have integrated the RSS Hindutva and the big bourgeois nexus. This has to be fought in class terms and this is where the utmost necessity for strengthening the left is required. So this is the message that comes out of the Lok Sabha election and the formation of the third Modi government. Finally, Comrade EMS used to say in our party meetings when we used to conduct a review or evaluate the work that we have done that we as communists must subject ourselves to ruthless self-criticism. That ruthless self-criticism must be undertaken by us so that we emerge more strengthened, more determined and more committed to go ahead for fighting for defense of democracy, secularism, federalism and to present a left and democratic alternative to the country. Thank you.